Stay tuned to find out how to do all of this painting in the tutorial. Um, there's some wet in wet techniques, some wet on dry, several different brush techniques, some textural techniques at the bottom and some glazing to bring it all together. It's something that a beginner can do and I'll talk you through step by step. Okay, it's that time of year when the farmers are all baling the hay and it makes for a lovely photograph to do. So what I've actually got here is quite a complex photograph with lots and lots of bales of hay. I've simplified it. So you've got the lines of the hills and the distant trees, the line of the field and then I've chosen a few select bales of hay. You don't need to put them all in. Um, it works really well. I'm going to go through the picture step by step. I'm using Saunders Waterford cotton paper today and I will mix the colours as I go. So the first colour I'm mixing up with about half a teaspoon of water, this pea-sized block to half a teaspoon of water is raw sienna. So I'm going to give that a good mix. I tend to use my water brush to squirt the water in and I've got a nice mix of raw sienna there. I've also got some burnt sienna. I'm going to pop a little bit of water there for that. And cobalt blue. A little bit of water in there for that. So I'm using Cotman colours, Windsor and Newton, a student quality colour, but very good, very highly pigmented. I'm going to take a little bit of that burnt sienna. I've not put as much water in there for the burnt sienna. I just want a little bit in there. Okay, so with my wash brush, I'm going to come into the sky and just over those very distant trees over this right hand side. Plenty of water on. I'm going to dip into my cobalt blue with my round number 10 and come in with a circular motion so I'm not lifting the brush off the paper. It's getting this nice blue within the top of the sky. There's quite a lot of cloud in the photograph so we're going to leave that low cloud. If I dab, I've not rinsed my brush into the burnt sienna, I'm just going to dab a little bit in and mix it around just in this top section. It just gives a little bit of variety and it makes a bit more of a greyer tone. It's quite nice. I'm going to drop down now to around number six. and I've got some Viridian Green here, which is very, very bright. Now if I take some of that neat onto my brush and then take some of that burnt sienna into it, it's going to make a much more natural green. You can see there that's more natural. I want a bit more in yet. These are distant trees so I don't want them to be too bright. So I'm just going to keep taking that. That's a really nice natural looking green. I've dabbed a tiny bit of water in there but not too much. So I'm going to come along this tree line here. Now with any sort of pathalo based pigment and Viridian is one of those it will shoot quite far. So if you come on and it seems like it's shooting very very far just wait for your paper to dry a little bit. You just want the sheen to be gone. Got those nice distant trees in there. If you just give it a minute or so, 
or even 30 seconds it depends how hot it is in your area really you can come back in and take a little bit more in that works quite nicely to add a bit more definition into those trees okay so I'm going to take a wash onto this bottom area now so I am looking at the hay field basically I'm going to leave a very fine line between those trees I've just done that are settling and drying so that I don't flow any water in and I don't smudge that so that's taking the water on with my wash brush and I'm going to come back in with my raw sienna so I'm going to sweep this across and basically coming all the way across leaving that very fine white line though that dry line just to protect those trees you can dry it off in between as well a little bit of a highlight tends to work quite nicely on that horizon line anyway and I'm ignoring the bales of hay at the minute just coming straight over the top I'm going to come in with a little bit of burnt sienna now I'm following the direction of the plough of the field now it's been quite helpful when I've been drawing these out to have that directional line getting smaller as it goes away so that you can work out how big the bales of hay need to be they're a lot smaller as they're in the distance I'll pop my drawings and photograph up on the community page as normal I'm just going to dab into a tiny bit of permanent rose and I'm going to bring that in just a little bit in this foreground area not a huge amount but it's just going to warm that up a bit warmer brings something forward cooler sets it back with that same green I'm going to dash in a few dabs of green which are within the photograph so I'm just stroking those through, I'm still using my round number 10 you could swap down if you wanted to when there's little paint on the brush you can just stroke in and do a few lines towards the back as well just gives a little bit of shadow as well just following those directional lines I'm going to take a little bit of the cobalt blue and burnt sienna together so I'm making a grey so I'm just literally dabbing out of that one and into this one and I've got a nice sort of browny grey here not too much water, a tiny bit and I'm just going to pop a little bit down here as well I'm going to use a little bit of clean film just to create a bit of texture in this foreground so this is going to help build that texture if you haven't got enough dark in these areas when you put the clean film on it just doesn't work so just dabbing a little bit of that in this is still nice and wet the other thing that I'm going to do now is I've taken a bit of kitchen towel rolled it up and I'm just going to dab off my bales of hay now I could have masked these out but I don't feel like I need to I'm quite happy just dabbing a little bit of light out if it, what's happened here is it's gone a little bit over then just make sure your brush is fairly dry just take a bit more of the raw sienna back in I don't need the whole thing to be light I just need an area of light so that, that's enough there I've got some clean film here and we're going to come into this bottom section 
So I'm going to place it down lightly and then I'm going to scrunch it to get texture. I'm lifting up these areas because I don't want it to go too high. I want that little bit of texture at the bottom edge and then I'm going to build texture with some dry watercolour paint later. So I'm going to let that dry now. Okay, so when it's nicely dry, you're just going to very gently peel the clean film off. I have just peeled this off so I can make sure that this was all dry to start the next stage. So you can see here I've got some lovely texture that we're going to be able to work into a little bit later. So I've got my round number 10. I'm going to come on to this section here which is the fields in the distance and pop this in so there's a little bit of water going on and then here I've got some sap green so I'm just going to dab into that and take a little bit on I always find with a smaller area that you're better to go on with a a normal brush than a wash brush because you're taking less paint, less water on and it works better on a smaller area. I'm just going to rinse that off and I'm going to dab into some raw sienna because sap green is quite vibrant and this will just knock it back a little bit because it's in the distance we want it to stay a little bit more muted. So I've just run a little bit of that through as well. Then I'm going to drop down to my round number six. So I need some more of this dark tree colour. So this was the Viridian. I'm going to take some burnt sienna in. Need to make sure I've got enough of that burnt sienna. So they're a little bit brighter but it's still nice and dark so there we go so that's that colour there look. So now I'm just waiting for the sheen to go a little bit. In fact whilst I'm just waiting for that I'm just going to take a little bit of the grey just run that through a shadow. So that's the grey that we made up a bit earlier with a bit of burnt sienna and cobalt blue. So I can denote that, that line of the field there. I can bring a little bit of shadow in here which is then going to help set the, the, the um, hay field a little bit further forward as well. Gives it a nice edge there. With anything like this, the photograph is quite complicated. You just want to simplify it a little bit. So I'm going to pop in a couple of shadows where I'm going to pop hedgerows in. Then we can keep it really nice and simple. So I've dried the brush off on my kitchen towel. I'm going to dip in to the green mix. We'll start here. Okay, so that's still a little bit too vibrant. So what I'm going to do is use a little bit more burnt sienna. In the mix. I don't want it to be too vibrant. That's better. So that little bit extra just made it a much nicer natural colour. So you vary the height on here and come in along. You're going to create an impression of the photograph. So it doesn't have to be exact. This is your painting, your impression. Right there. The number six with hardly any water on and thick paint just means these trees will just stay put where they need to be. 
the sheen has gone off the paper so there's not much flow but there's enough flow for it to soften in and look like it's in the distance. So in comparison to the photo I'm putting a lot less in which is absolutely fine. My painting, my choice. Your painting, your choice. The simplest scenes work the best. Take a little bit just on the horizon there. Okay, so then I'm going to come down and use my round number 10. I've got that raw sienna mix. I'm going to dab a little bit of burnt sienna into that to make it a little bit darker. And I'm going to take a little bit of a dab of the blue in. So I've ended up with a sort of raw sienna grey, it's more muted tone and it's going to work lovely for the shadow. So with my round number 10 I'm going to come on and I'm going to follow the directional line on the hayfield. Now if you vary the pressure of the brush, you can lift it off in a few places as well, you'll get a really nice natural effect. I'm just popping in a few lines at the minute. If you're using a big enough brush you won't have to dip back in on a stroke, that's one of the benefits. I'm just flowing through. You could use a flat to do this as well. What's quite nice about using a round is you've got that variety of the line because you vary the pressure. That works really nicely. So we do a few lines as we get towards the back. Then if I rinse my brush off, dab it in a little bit of water, dab it off so it's not too wet. These distant ones, I'm just going to soften in the bottom edge. I don't want them to be too strong in the distance. So I'm just running water on that bottom edge. We come back into the colour. We've got a little bit of this left. And I'm going to hold my brush on the side like that. And I'm just going to catch the surface of the paper. So this is that dry brush effect, which your brush isn't dry, it's loaded with paint, but that's what it's called. So this is just adding a little bit more texture. Scraping through. Just in that bottom third section, don't want to go any higher really. Okay, I need a tiny bit more of the raw sienna. These bales of hay, I want to make sure that they are a little bit lighter. So I'm going to drop down to round number six and just pick up a little bit of that colour. I'm going to come in at the bottom, at the top, at the side. That's a little bit of the burnt sienna gone into that mix. So the sides are shadowed. So we need those to be darker, 
but on each of the other sides of the bail there's a little bit of a highlight that's lighter. So if I show you on this bigger one by taking it in at the bottom and at the top and then I'm going to take a damp brush and I'm just going to wet in between. So I'm not taking any more painting. It's harder to do this on the littler ones but you can still do it on the medium sized ones. The littler ones we can just leave light. Damp brush. What you're wanting to preserve is that little bit of light in between. I'm going to put some more texture into this foreground now. So I've got a flat and I'm coming into the raw sienna. I'm going to take a dab of water in. I'm going to take a little bit of that grey in as well. And then with the flat, I'm just going to start to create some upright texture. So I'm, I've actually turned sideways so I can do this with ease without moving it, but you could just move your painting round as well. And this is just going to start to build that first layer on top of the other layers. So you've got that texture from the clean film underneath, and then you've got this brush texture. Vary the height that you're creating here. You can vary the angle a little bit as well. It all adds to the composition, these few little lines coming up and across the field. All adds to the composition. I'm going to dip into that dark green mix as well. Take a few bits in. So it's that natural green that we used in the background on the trees. Remember, variety of height again. And I'm going to dab into the grey. So in between these, I haven't rinsed my brush. But what I basically want is a variety of tone in this foreground. Now I am taking it a little bit darker than it is in the photograph. That's to give a, great scent, a greater sense of distance. You don't want too much of this grey in, just to build the texture. So that's building up really nicely now. then we just need to put a little bit of shadow so if I take a bit of that grey into the raw sienna that raw sienna mix I've got that sort of mucky grey again and I can come in and just create a bit of shadow underneath each of these bales so it grounds them basically If they're still a little bit damp it will run in and that will work to, to the advantage of giving it a little bit of shadow just on that edge which is fine. 
it all still works really well. Okay, I'm going to dry that one off. Okay, so that's dried nicely and really well now. And what I'm going to show you last of all is a little bit of a glaze. So I'm going to dip my wash brush into water and I'm going to come on with a bit of raw sienna. Now I'm only going to do this up to the bales of hay. But what the, this does is just give it a little bit of a warmth and I'm coming around the bales of hay. So you can see that it gives it a warmth and a sense of a real sense of distance. Just make sure it's not too thick and you need to work fairly quickly. I'm dipping into a bit of the sap green at the very bottom front section as well. And that just gives it an extra bit of oomph and a bit of warmth. In fact, you could take a tiny bit of rose in as well, and that would really warm it up. Just in that front section. There we go. Okay, then I've, I've um, taken the tape off so you can see the finished result. It's um, a really nice, simple scene for a beginner but also very, very effective. And with those glazes in the foreground, you can see that, that that sense of distance and the freshness is still there and this lovely texture. Um, so if you've enjoyed this video, I'll pop another beginner's video here for you and a playlist for beginners here for you as well. Um, please do like and subscribe. Um, I do tutorials weekly. Um, see you next time.